tonight on Most Shocking. A SWAT team comes under fire, leaving a veteran cop gravely wounded. Then, get out of the car. Police trying to arrest a drunk driver get caught in a bystander beatdown. And deputies respond to a domestic disturbance and get a violent eviction notice. Plus, a pistol-packing drug dealer threatens to kill an undercover detective. Hey, man. Be still! Be still! Then later, for one officer, the scene of an accident becomes a ticking time bomb. This is not a movie. Everything you're about to see is real. Brace yourself. This is most shocking. Cops under attack. Lawrence, South Carolina. The strategic response team suits up for a raid on the home of a dangerous drug dealer. They're armed with high caliber weaponry. And one of them is outfitted with a buttonhole camera to record the bust for evidence. Commander Don Evans briefs the squad. The way we prepare for any search warrant, uh, to try to do background checks on who we were going after. The suspects we were going after in this particular case had had a history of violence. Their training has prepared them for any situation. Yet this raid will turn out to be anything but routine. The officers quickly take position. What they don't know is that the armed drug dealers have rigged the home with numerous surveillance cameras and are lying in wait behind the door. Immediately upon breach, the suspects open fire. The scene erupts into a blizzard of bullets. In the chaos, a grim fact emerges. At the other end of the house, an officer has been shot. Cops want to end this quickly. But the desperate druggies are using an eight-month-old baby as a human shield. Once I see the child inside the house, I'm like, well, we got a definite problem now. We didn't know if we was going to have a barricade where the guy with his child, somebody else's child. Bad guy's a bad guy. He don't care whose child it is. He's going to try to do whatever he can to get out of the situation. A tense standoff ensues with neither side giving an inch. Boy maintained contact with him and stayed on him real hard. Uh, really wanted him to know verbally that we're not backing down. This, this situation's not going away, and we wanted we want to solve it fast. Outmanned and outgunned, the cowardly suspects see the writing on the wall. The baby is rushed outside, and the criminals are arrested. Clear. With the house secured, the team checks the status of the injured officer. He's been blasted by a gunshot wound to his back that barely missed his heart. You're talking inches. He was very lucky with a, with a round struck him. Uh, that didn't do any more damage to him than it did. The officer survives the shooting. And the drug dealers, Constanzas Williams and Kenyatta Hunter, are lucky they won't add cop killer to their lengthy rap sheets. Evans credits decisive control of the situation for the success of the takedown. I guess they thought they would shoot, we would leave. We turned the tables on them, showed them that, hey, we're here to stay. You coming up? Yeah, we're coming up, you! They're attacking you, turn it over. 
Do not be the victim. Roll it over. Make them the victim. Turn it. Lake Mary, Florida. Officers are called to a drunken domestic disturbance. The intoxicated suspect is a bartender. But tonight, he's serving up a double shot of violent resistance. The man struggles to gain the upper hand. As police fight to get him under control. Why are you going Cops try to subdue the bruiser with pepper spray. But the man is so smashed, it has little effect. Why get on your stomach now? Hey, I'm with you. No, you're not. Come here, here, here. Finally, the suspect appears to surrender. You guys are the law. You are 25 times stronger than I could ever imagine. But even though he's under control, the crime scene isn't. The drunk man's brother suddenly advances. Back up. I don't care. Back up. No. Back up. Thankfully, the cop's warning keeps the brother at bay. But when they try to get the suspect into their cruiser, the belligerent bozer tries tripping up the arresting officers. Once again, he finds himself up close and personal with the pavement. No one is No one is fucking Craig Trevarthen pleads no contest to resisting an officer with violence and is sentenced to 90 days in jail. But for police, the night serves as a sobering reminder. In the field, there's no such thing as a routine call. Dude, back off. Atlanta, Georgia. Narcotics officers take great care to set up their drug busts. But even in the best plan, Sting, the one unpredictable element is the criminal. Hey, man. Be still, be still. What these three dealers don't know is that this hotel room is rigged to bust a marijuana ring. The undercover cop enters, drugs in hand. He lays out the deal and waits for the suspect in the white shirt and black pants to take the bait. The buyer appears to go to the kitchen to get the payment. But charges back in with a 44 caliber handgun. Hey, man! Be still! Be still! He has the agent on the couch, point blank. Aiming to kill, but he's about to be outmatched. An officer bursts in and cold cocks the gunman. The crook is disarmed. Then a dozen more officers pour in and bust the other bad guys. An agent's life is saved in the nick of time. And a dangerous crew is taken off the streets. A drug sting always has the potential to go wrong. Fortunately, when this sting hit a glitch, it was the dealers who paid the price. St. Stephen, South Carolina. In a rough part of town, an officer pulls over a drunk driver and his passenger. Residents from a nearby apartment complex get too close for comfort. Another unit arrives. Get out of the car. As the patrolmen place the suspects under arrest, the growing mob gets more unruly. They shout at the cops, getting right in their faces. In the chaos, the driver tries to slip out of his cuffs. The situation is quickly spiraling out of control. Until finally, one girl goes on the assault.
then a man from the crowd tries to get in on the action. The outnumbered police are surrounded. They never see it coming. It starts when the struggling captive breaks away. While authorities are distracted, the thug charges in and blindsides one of them with a brutal blow. When the Brazilian patrolman gets right back up, the cop-punching coward hightails it away. The officer sustains a broken eye socket. His attacker is still at large. But when police finally catch up to him, they'll ensure his assault on the law lands him in the slam. Coming up... A narcotics officer hits the gas to save herself from an armed dealer. Then, police try to remove reported squatters from a house and get bombarded by boulders. Plus, a drunk driver severs a gas line and a cop gets caught in a fiery blast. That's next on Most Junkin', Cops Under Attack. Rural Washington. On a backcountry road, a dangerous drug dealer suspects his female client is an undercover informant. Let me hear you. You got a wire on you? 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 His suspicion is correct. The officer suddenly spots a pistol in the pusher's waistband. With her cover blown, she punches the gas, but he hangs on. There's a ball, Debbie. I'm fine. I get off. I'm fine. I get off. Stop. Let me get off, Debbie. Let me get off. Hey, I'm going to pass, Debbie. You're going to hurt me, girl. Now, I'm going to go. Let me get off, Debbie. She fears if she slows down, it could free up one of his hands to grab the gun. Now the armed criminal begs for a break. But the cop knows all too well what can happen if she stops. Debbie tries to pry off the determined dealer's fingers. But he still refuses to let go. Then, the armed man's grasp finally slips, and he tumbles onto the road. He suffers a broken nose and ribs and is quickly arrested. When her undercover sting took a bad turn, the quick thinking agent put the pedal to the metal and made the dope dealing lowlife eat her dust. Prescott, Wisconsin. Officer Ben Henrik responds to a 911 accident call. He follows the tracks in the snow where a drunk driver careened into the side of a house, severing the natural gas line. I've never smelled that much gas before. Uh, immediately I know this is not good. If something happens, this whole house is going to explode. Thankfully, the homeowners have already evacuated. But Henrik must now risk his life to save the day's driver. Both of the doors were in a position that they couldn't be opened. And I'm yelling at the driver, Hey, are you okay? Are you okay? Ma'am, are you okay? Keeps looking around the truck. Very disoriented. Henrik orders a bystander back across the street. 
Unfortunately, the officer's rescue attempt of the driver is about to be cut short. As I turned, everything stopped. Um, time seemed to stand still. I couldn't hear anything. And my next thought was, this is blowing up. It's a massive blast. The eruption sends Henrik flying 15 feet through the air. That's all I thought, was that uh, I'm dying. This, this is it, I'm dying tonight. And everything was just quiet. Incredibly, Henrik survives the hellish explosion. But as backup pulls the injured cop to safety, his only thoughts are with the truck. I kept telling him, she's still in the truck, she's still in the truck. There's one person in the truck, and he keeps telling me she's gone. There's nothing you can do about For Officer Ben Henrik, it's a tragic reality. But he knows it could have been much worse. Because every day a cop goes to work, could be his last. The biggest thing is I can come home and see my family. That's the big thing, the thing that I'm most grateful for. Bogota, Colombia. After a property owner is accused of failing to pay his mortgage for the past five years, police are called to forcefully evict the residents. But the owner claims he's already settled the bill. He and his family refuse to leave without a fight. A judge attempts to serve them official notice. But the outraged occupants send him scrambling for cover. The cops try to break in with a blowtorch. But the rampaging residents blast them with bricks. Round one goes to the homeowner. Police regroup and storm the gate. As they try to access the house, the dwellers poke through their defenses. Rain down pain from above. The siege continues in a stalemate. But when the rioters crack the bones of two cops, the officers bring in the big guns. They spray the dissidents with a high-pressured hose. Realize they are outmanned and outgunned. The inhabitants from hell finally surrender. The renegade residents thought they were justified in defending their home. But they should have fought their case in court instead of battling police on the streets. Still to come, a shotgun wielding fugitive gives troopers a double barrel death threat. Plus, police respond to a domestic disturbance call and end up on the receiving end of a beating. And later, an officer in a pickup fights for his life against a wanted murderer. Straight ahead on Most Chuckin' Cops Under Attack. Carrollton, Georgia. Deputy Shane Spradlin is called to the scene of a violent altercation between a husband and wife. From the start, Spradlin and Sergeant Robbie Williams are on guard. Domestic disturbance calls are probably some of the most dangerous calls that cops can respond to. 
every situation is different. There's no way to tell what the next call is going to hold. It appears at first that the man and wife have already made up. But as the officers are about to find out, the battle is anything but over. It's a brutal struggle. And the deputies are left shocked at how quickly the events turn violent. The suspect took a drink from his beer bottle and slung it at me. From that point on, the fight was on. The husband muscles Spradlin out the door. The officer hits the railing and topples over the side. Spradlin jumps right back into the fray to help Williams bring the brawling man down. Inside, the deputies overpower the raging suspect and restrain him. You okay, Shay? Yeah. After the subject was handcuffed, he basically, the fight was gone. Terry Jr. Reese is convicted of two counts of aggravated assault and felony obstruction and gets 10 years in prison. The belligerent homeowner thought he was the master of his domain. But when he decided to assault an officer of the law, he signed a lease on a new residence, the Carroll County Jail. Panama City, Panama. Tensions have been building between construction crews and police. Just days ago, a worker was shot by a cop during a violent labor dispute. Now his fellow hard hatters are fuming and go on a rock hurling rampage. More officers show up to restore order. But the reinforcements only further enrage the furious workers. They launch pipes and steel beams at the arriving units. The patrolmen are trapped as concrete boulders rain on them like mortar shells. One thug even bludgeons the helpless cop as he tries to get away. In the midst of it all, local hooligans decide to take part in the mayhem. Now authorities have a full-blown riot on their hands. With the neighborhood falling into chaos, they decide enough is enough. Officers storm into position and launch round after round of tear gas at the screaming horde. Ultimately, the non-lethal strategy works. More than 500 rioters are corralled and arrested. Many of the workers were protesting on the job. But when construction turned to destruction, cops were forced to clock them out. Omaha, Nebraska. 911, what is your emergency? Um, I just got robbed. A highway patrolman tails a suspect wanted in connection with four armed robberies. The criminal knows that if he gets caught, he faces a long jail sentence. But getting caught is not what he has in mind. If you want to get shot, you don't have the fire yet. The cranked-up con fires through his back window, spraying buckshot and shattered glass at the officer. Amazingly, the shotgun blast just misses the patrolman. He calls for additional backup. He'll need it. His fellow officers join the chase. 
But suddenly, the suspect takes the pursuit off-road, careening into the woods. Units slalom through the thicket, trying desperately to take down the would-be cop killer. In the dust and confusion, the lead pursuer ends up in the lake. His dash cam now recording only a terrifying hailstorm of gunfire. None of the cops are hit. The gunman, Robert Carter, is shot six times, but survives. He is sentenced to 30 years in prison for trying to take an officer's life. He'll spend most of his behind bars. 61, he shot me. Up next, a trooper's routine traffic stop. The reason I stopped is because I had you on the laser gun at 76 and a 55 zone. Turns into a near brush with death. Uh, Officers go toe-to-toe -to -toe against a brutal band of brothers. Then, rioters armed with rocks go Stone Age on police. When most shocking cops under attack returns. Gertengen, Germany. Police converge on an apartment complex to question three brothers about a local theft. Their story checks out. But a new situation arises when cops discover their father is in the country illegally. The stubborn patriarch refuses to leave. Immigration officials are on the way, and it's a tense standoff as police try to keep the angry family under control. The older man's wife rages at the cops. Her daughter tries to rein her in. But then, the woman's sons confront the officers, and the crowd gets unruly. Push comes to shove, then punches fly. One son cold cocks a cop in the face, knocking him to the pavement. Police try to restrain the attacker. Then all hell breaks loose. Another son takes an officer to the ground and pounds away. His mother storms in, begging him and his brothers to stop. They wisely obey. As medics tend to the injured, the father finally agrees to turn himself in to immigration authorities. When cops got the brunt of a family's outrage, it took a mother's pleas to end the chaos. Greenville County, South Carolina. Deputy Will Richter and his partner pull over a car for speeding. The reason I stopped is because I had you on the laser gun at 76 and a 55 zone. They have no reason to believe this stop will be anything but normal. Traffic stops are something that are part of a police officer's daily routine, so to speak. It's something that, you know, we do thousands of times a year. But in this job, danger comes from any direction. Right. Ah! A speeding vehicle careens over the white line. The front of the car barely misses Deputy Richter. But the mirror hits him dead on. Sending shards of glass into the officer's leg. Ah! Is that right? ah! Go after that guy. I did hear a whoosh of air, I heard breaking glass, and some kind of thud. I realized that I had been struck by a car. Amazingly, Deputy Richter manages to stay in control. 
He sends his partner after the car. Go get him. The deputy guns it down the freeway. But the side-swiping speedster disappears into the night. It's not until the situation has calmed that the officer assesses his own wounds. I felt the back of my pants and I could feel blood. My calves were hurting. Uh, they felt like they were on fire. Thankfully, Deputy Richter suffers no lasting injuries. But he still thinks of the driver who nearly ended his life. At this point, the suspect has not been apprehended and is still at large. And I am hopeful that at some point he or she will be brought to justice. With any luck, the hit and runner can be taken off the street before he puts another officer in a pinch. You're to Sweden. The streets erupt in chaos during a protest against the European Union. Angry demonstrators hurl bricks and stones, smashing windows and signs. Whipped into a frenzy, they try to upend a parked van. One vandal even stomps on the top of a police wagon. But just as the riot seems to be raging out of control, officers arrive in force to restore peace. Protesters immediately turn their anger on the cops. They pummel police with a hail of rocks. Each hurled stone is a potentially deadly blow to the boys in blue. But the guards are protected by helmets and heavy shields. They charge headlong toward their attackers. The tide turns as authorities use every means at their disposal, including tear gas and a show of firepower. Dozens of arrests are made, and order returns to the streets. In the end, 37 people are injured, including 10 officers. When this furious mob used violence against cops to demonstrate their cause, police had to face the threat head on to squelch the uprising. Coming up, a traffic stop suspect knocks a cop off his feet, then loses the clothes off his back. Plus, an armed man slashes at police on the highway and gets met with a deadly detour. But first, drunken college students pelt authorities with rocks, forcing the wheels of justice to roll. Straight ahead on Most Shocking, Cops Under Attack. Boulder, Colorado. A crackdown on student drinking turns this college town upside down. When the bars close at 2 a.m., the drunken partiers are met outside by officers in riot gear. The intoxicated underclassmen build a wall of dumpsters, creating a barrier against the line of cops. But then the demonstrators take their protest too far. Cowering behind their blockade, they open fire with rocks and bottles. Bombs of broken glass rain down. The aggressors now targeting police directly. The riot guards stand firm. But with the flames spreading and tempers flaring, the mixture of anger and alcohol looks like it could explode into bloodshed. 
authorities determine that enough is enough. Do not disperse. We will use gas against you. Please. They fire back with tear gas and rubber bullets. The crowd scatters. And cops quickly move in to handcuff the most violent of the offenders. By the time the sun rises on the wreckage, the 11 rioters are arrested. And dozens of students and officers are injured. When these boozy bookworms decided to fight for their right to party, police untap their kegs for good. Minsk, Belarus. Officers surround a madman on the highway. He crashed his van into the guardrail, then terrorized other motorists with a knife. Now he threatens police with a razor-sharp scrap of steel. They fire warning shots. Undeterred, the lunatic lunges like an enraged bull. It's an escalating crisis, forcing cops into desperate action. One officer hurls a glass bottle at the crazed man. Another patrolman blindsides him with a kick. And the chain reaction knocks the first officer to the asphalt. Police blast more warning shots. But the untamable brute refuses to surrender. He leaves police no choice. They aim at his legs and fight. One shot punctures his thigh. But incredibly, the wounded man is still standing and more erratic than ever. He pulls off his pants and kicks them at the nearest policeman. The loose cannon has to be stopped. So when he charges at officers yet again, they wound his legs twice more. And finally, it's over. After he's released from the hospital, the troubled man is checked into a mental war. When this marauding maniac unleashed his rage on cops, the only way to take him down was force of will and firepower. Kenansville, North Carolina. Lieutenant Chris Smith investigates a suspicious man parked in a field. Smith tries to secure the driver for questioning, but right away, the suspect makes it clear he's not talking. He muscles out of the officer's grasp, and both men stumble to the ground. As Smith's canine partner barks from the cruiser, the perp overpowers the lieutenant and wrestles free. But when he breaks for the forest, the running man starts to lose his footing and his pants. Smith releases the canine. The suspect may have a big head start, but his lead is about to be stripped away. Hey, man, get back over here! He streaks by the dash cam like a bearskin bullet. But the lieutenant and his dog are right on his heels. Moments later, the buck-naked bad guy is in custody. He started his evening by assaulting an officer. But the offender's violent run-in with the law left him out in the cold. And behind bars. Coming up... Officer stops an armed murderer and nearly becomes his next victim. Next on Most Shocking Cops Under Attack.
Gaffney, South Carolina. A desperate maniac is on the run. He just shot and killed his ex-wife's father and has taken her mother hostage. Officer Kevin Wilson is in the black pickup truck chasing the renegade down. After I passed the vehicle and I seen the rifle, I knew right then this is going to be bad. You back a dog up in the corner, he's going to come out. Wilson is about to find out how bad it can be. The cop runs the smaller sedan off the road. Once the car stopped, the hostage got out of the driver's side and she did the best thing anybody could have done. She closed the door behind her. Keeping the subject in the car, he couldn't get out. The gunman is trapped in his car. But now, so is Officer Wilson. Unable to reach his pistol in time, Wilson has only one option. I reached an end to his passenger window trying to hold the gun to keep it away as the hostage got out of the vehicle. As he wrestles for his life, another cop approaches from behind. The officer waits for just the right moment, when suddenly, a shot rings out from inside the car, and backup opens fire. But the struggle in the cab has already come to a deadly conclusion. I had my hand on the gun, and it was pointed at me, and he, he fired it, and it dry fired. It didn't go off. So he racked it again, putting another bullet into the rifle. At that time, we were struggling again with the gun, and the gun went off and shot him in the chest. Police cautiously approached the vehicle and cuff the injured suspect. But he never makes it to jail. For his heroism, Officer Kevin Wilson receives multiple commendations and awards. But his biggest reward is walking away with his life. On a day when a deranged gunman forced him to literally dodge a bullet lucky because I didn't have a bulletproof vest on and it could win either way 50 50 chance and that day the good Lord was looking looking down on me it's one of the most dangerous jobs in the world to protect and serve because whether they're on the streets in their cars or at the sea Police face constant threats from all sides. So cops are always on guard to maintain the thin blue line between calm and chaos. 